What's up, everybody? This is your boy, Paul the Fifth, and today I'm sharing with you a little bit about the journey and some of the issues that I first encountered when I got my new M1 MacBook Pro from Apple. I got it was able to get everything set up fairly smoothly with a time machine backup. I turned the laptop off for the evening. The next morning, I found myself in a world of trouble. This is what happened. happened. All right, it is 8, 11, and we're doing round one of the MacBook Pro M1 unboxing. I'm a little nervous, I don't know why, because I do this all the time, but here we go. All right, let's get this bad boy turned upside down. All right, here we go. I'm so excited because I have had such an H-E double hockey stick of a time getting my MacBook Pro to work tonight. Five times I've had to reboot the laptop. Here we go. go. Here she is. <laughs> I'm so excited, everybody. I, I can't tell you the amount of issues I've been dealing with. This is gonna make my life so much easier. Ooh. Here she is. In the box, we have our charging cable a little different than normal these are i guess what you call the usb-c this thing's probably six foot we have our design by apple in california and here is our big brick power adapter I know it says designed in California, but I'm pretty sure they made this in China, 
because when I got the email, it was telling me that it was shipping from some Chinese providence. So I'm glad that it is here. Here's the case that I got. I've got a couple cool stickers I'm gonna put on here. My Sweetwater sticker and the icon that my niece India made me is going on here too. Peeling off the bottom plastic. Check this out. On the bottom part of the case, these rubber icons are gonna fit perfectly in alignment with the rubber buttons here. Let's get this bad boy a nice sheen. Here we go. We're gonna put the case on my new M1 spec'd out customized MacBook Pro. Ah, beautiful. Opening her up for the very first time. Look at that. English is the main language. Press the return key. Oh my gosh, it's talking to me. <laughs> yes, I speak English. Select a country or region that states. I don't know. The Diamond Sound 5G. Because you know, my name is Paul the Fifth. Fifth. So I got to connect to Diamond Sound 5G, 5 gigahertz. Privacy. Migration assistant. Here we go. Let's open this hyperdrive up. On the migration assistant, I'll be using a time machine backup from my previous 27 inch iMac that I had that you may have seen me give to Ivan last week. Ooh, sweet, it comes with this little pouch. How nice is that? Here's our port. We have are two ports here. We have an HDMI slot. We have two USB-Cs. We have an SD port, SD adapter on the bottom and two USBs here. Only question now is will this work with my case? No, but it comes with this adapter. Let's pop that out and set this up. So we'll take this 
in there. Beautiful. We'll take my Legacy Studios hard drive, pop it into that. How do you want to transfer your information from a Mac, Time Machine Backup, or Startup Disk? Time Machine Backup. I've got to plug this in to power. Oh my gosh, everybody. I can't tell you how excited I am to have this new device. My current MacBook Pro crashed on me, I think probably five times last night. Like a glove. I feel like a magician. Look how long that cable is. This goes into here. Now the magic begins. Select a Mac, time machine backup, or other startup disk to transfer its information to this Mac. Looking for other sources, make sure that the other Mac, time capsule, or disk that you are transferring from is connected to the same network or directly connected to this Mac. That's taking place right here. When transferring from another Mac, open the migration assistant app in the utilities folder on that Mac and select to another Mac. We're on the current wireless network here. This is looking for other sources. Should be this hard drive here, which is my Legacy Studios external hard drive. It's just time to wait and wait and wait. Rolling, rolling, rolling. I'm waiting, waiting, waiting. Rawhide. Well, there's some features on here that I'm not used to. These speakers are a lot longer. We have some brightness, and then we have the touchpad for volume up, down, mute. I'll tell you what, this screen is flipping amazing. It's vivid, it's bright, it's bold, it's in your face. It's kind of like the screen on my Vizio TV. I guess I'm in a waiting game, waiting for the new laptop to recognize my Legacy Studios hard drive. So I had to do some fiddle faddling messing around. Turns out this first port was plugged in, but wasn't recognizing my hard drive. Light wasn't on. So I moved from port one to port two, re-plug that in. Now we have my hard drive information right here so let's back it up from that today's the 27th i think my last backup was from december 22nd around that time frame it should tell me yeah last backup tuesday december 22nd 9 55 01 p.m so like that standard time gosh you have no idea how excited i am while this is taking some time to back up, in case you hadn't heard, Christmas morning, approximately 6.30 a.m., there was a bomb that went off in downtown Nashville. I'll put the link in the description. I watched it and no pun intended, but I was blown away. So apparently this dude Set up an RV. I don't know the entire story. Set up shop about 8.30 the night before. 6.30. Oh, I've got some information here. My applications. Paul, the fifth. Other files and folders. System and network. I'm going to let that do its thing. But apparently this guy parked his RV outside the night before. And 6.30, there's a warning says, you have so much time to evacuate. If you can hear this, you need to leave now. That went off about three times. The next thing you know, the screen is going. <clears throat> and 
and like I was out of town Christmas morning we were opening up presents about 8 30 gift exchange having breakfast doing all the things we do on Christmas I'm seeing this announcement in my Facebook feed and I'm like what the hell just happened I live approximately 10 to 15 minutes 10 to 15 miles from downtown people in that range from downtown were able to feel that blast I had a rental car because on the 20th some drunk driver this dude was high whatever pulls out and smashes my back end of my van so my van is not drivable from Tennessee to Indiana so I have to get a rental on my way back I dropped the rental off at Enterprise and trying to get an Uber I knew when I first got the vehicle the building is up here and then where you go in is at the bottom of this hill so I didn't have very good signal I thought well maybe signal you know it's just not good then I remember we had a bomb that just blew up the AT&T building so my signal was out I could not catch an Uber cool 5.19 gigs on applications haul the fifth 209 gigs other files and folders 591 bytes system and network let's see applications are up to 15 gigs now oh it's going and it's going 12,000 items holy sh back to Batman the Batman building I get back to town I cannot get cell or Wi-Fi coverage for anything so enterprises up here I have to walk I don't know something like a mile a mile and a half down Franklin Pike just to get to a fast food restaurant where I can connect my wireless device to the internet and I finally get an uber I get connected and I get to come back home and then I'm getting calls my text messages are all flooding in I let my folks know that I made it back to town safely and that there's no signal I don't wish this for anybody Nashville has just been directly affected so hard this year we had the tornado on March 3rd we've been dealing with COVID since March everything's shut down now this the one thing I will say about Nashville in the almost six years that I've been here is this city is full of not only music great people strength and love we will overcome this together once again as we have so many times this year so many things have happened in the six years I've been here we will just get through it I myself am counting on my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to help me get through some of these issues. Oh, speaking of issues, everything's well, no issues here. 170 gigs worth of applications, 210 gigs of all the stuff, other files and folders, 3.31 gigs, system and network, 10.3 megs. Let's get this transfer started. Man, this thing just feels sturdy, strong. It feels I feel like a new man. <laughs> I got a new computer, a new toy. Oh my gosh, I love this thing so far already. You can migrate later. Not bad. Three and a half hours. 9.42, saying 56 minutes remaining. Oh, wow. <laughs> All right, we are rolling. Logging in with my Apple ID. This crazy. In this room alone, I have my Mac Mini, this new MacBook Pro. I've got my old MacBook Pro, my two iPhones, and this iPad. So six devices in this room. I've not worn my Apple Watch. There it goes, setting up my iCloud. It's 10.39 on Sunday, 
December the 27th. This took less than an hour from start to finish as far as setting up the new computer and doing the full backup, which was probably close to 600 gigs, you know, about half a terabyte. This M1 is fast. All right, we're trying to let iCloud do its thing. I can see me, seeing me, seeing me. <laughs> I can't remember who commented on that before, but I thank you for laughing at my jokes while I'm waiting on the iCloud backup to finish. Let me share some of my first thoughts and impressions on this M1 MacBook. It's a beast. It's fast. It feels heavy duty. It's bright. It's vivid. It came pretty much fully charged. I'm sure the battery life is going to be amazing and just exceed my expectations. So far, this iCloud stuff, it's taking a minute, but it's probably this booty internet that I'm on here, which is a five gigahertz connection. Wow, that's fast. Big dreams. Oh my goodness. <laughs> um, yeah, I have to get my, my way stuff and some of this other stuff installed, but. So that's called Big Dreams. Where is my iMovie? Ooh, all my isotope stuff's there. I did have some stuff on here. Okay. That was real thunder that I captured from my apartment hello, back hello. in April. All right, so day two. It's 10.36, I just got off work, it's Monday night. For whatever reason, when I did the backup yesterday, I had Big Sur on, I guess, on my iMac. So, let's go over here. <laughs> that is so dope. So yesterday, on this one, when I shut it down, I did the whole Command R thing to reboot it and here's where we are and here it is an error occurred preparing the update failed to personalize the software update please try again oh my gosh everybody my shirt's all holy it's the last day of the year and i don't care and i'm by myself backing up the mac mini worked on the new g drive hard drive this has been a two day migraine of a headache trying to get this new macbook pro working i think we're almost there here we are it's day two it's Thursday, December 31st, it is 3.01 p.m. The rep today had me go into a disk utility and erase the disk, which I already done three times, but I wanted to try it again. And generally when things get to this point at the hour mark, it said it's been trying to install for two hours. Once it gets to the hour mark or 59 minutes, I've had server errors that crash. I hope and pray to baby Jesus it doesn't do that for me because I have a session on Sunday.